You've tuned in to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes. Your access to success strategies and more to help you move onward and upward with your life. Listen in each week as she interviews others who have really taken their essence to the next level and truly unpaused their life. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Estes. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Dr. Kelly Estes and I am founder of the Addictions Academy the addictions coach and rehab rescue. Welcome to Unpause Your Life. This is a great podcast where we showcase people who have done something extraordinary with their life. I welcome you and I hope you enjoy all of our guests. On my way found a reason to wake up another day. Good morning and you are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes. And my awesome guest today is Shelly Campbell. I'm so excited for her to be on here. She is the creator of the Financial Stress Reduction Workshops and author of best-selling books, The Wealthy Spirit, Zero to Zillionaire, and From Worry to Wealthy, published in seven countries and six languages. Voted most inspirational speaker by women in management, speaker of the year by the Association of Women Entrepreneurs, and Rotarian of the Year by the Pacific Palisades Rotary Club, She is the past president of the Los Angeles chapter of the National Association of Women Business Owners and was Los Angeles District SBA Women in Business Advocate. She has been prominently quoted as a financial expert in the Los Angeles Times, Family Circle, Red Book, Good Housekeeping, Lifetime, Essence, Women's World, and more than 50 popular books. Welcome, Shelly Campbell. Thank you so much. It's great to be here this morning. Well, I'm glad to have you. You have been one of my mentors and you haven't known it for 10 years. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? How could that be? (laughs) Well, in 2008, I lost a $4 million company that I had built from zero. And a friend of mine handed me your book, The Wealthy Spirit, Mm -hmm. and said, you need to read this. And of course, I was in no mood to read anything. And I sat and read it and I was like, oh, wow, I'm doing everything backwards. That's very interesting. How wonderful that a friend handed you that. (laughs) Yeah, I I was very excited when I sat down. I thought, I don't have time to read a book. And then it was so easy to read. And I started following all the stories and I started applying them. And when I started applying them, my life shifted. So I'm so excited to have you on. Well, thank you so much. When I, when I was thinking about writing a book, I mean, when I started teaching my financial stress reduction workshop, a lot of people said, oh, you should write a book too. And I'm a big reader, read books all my life. And I always went, how could anybody write a book, you know? And people would say, you should write one. I would go, oh, no, 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 I could never do that. And it's interesting how often we think we can't do stuff for a long time. And then all of a sudden, one day we go, wait, I could do that. Because I had been teaching classes for like eight years. And um, some people were saying, you really have to write a book now. I mean, this class is great, but it's only in L.A. That was before I made it a teleclass and could have anybody anywhere. You know, I said, well, I was thinking I need to get these messages out because I can see I'm really helping people and I could write it down and reach the people that I can't reach in person. And this one woman said, yes, please do that because I got to get some some help for my mother-in-law in Arizona and my best friend in New York and they can't come to L.A. for eight weeks. So I said, okay. Then I go to the bookstore and I look in the financial section at all the books. And they were real hard energy money. They were like, how to be, make a fortune in real estate or accounting principles or how to do bookkeeping or financial planning, invest your money for the future, save for retirement. And I wasn't about any of that. I, I think money is supposed to be fun and you got to spend some along the way and have a great life now because 
you know, we don't know how long we're going to live. I was never afraid of running out of money when I was old. I was terrified that I would die before I had any fun. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so when I when I wrote The Wealthy Spirit, I got the idea because I read the daily word from Unity Church every day. It was just a little passage. It was embracing, inspirational, with some spirituality to it. And I went, I was driving in the car going, how am I going to write my book so it's interesting and fun? And boom. It hit me. I'm going to do it as a page a day book and I'll tell a story and have a positive quote and an affirmation. And and then people won't feel like they have to read this hard, long book about money that they can just read a story every day and it'll teach them about money without being too hard. So I started I thought I was a genius with this idea until I had written a hundred of them, mind you realized I had 265 more to do. (laughs) But for me as a writer, as somebody who never thought I could write a whole long book, but I could write a page and I could tell a story that had a point. So that's how I wrote The Wealthy Spirit. And um, I've just been really thrilled with the response that people have read the book and kept reading it and started over the next year. I got a connection from a guy on LinkedIn, and he was a vice president with J.P. Morgan and the investment firm. And I said, well, how did you hear about me? And he said, well, I've been reading a page a day of The Wealthy Spirit every day since 2005. Wow. I just never imagined that anybody would do that. Uh Uh-huh. That was amazing. (laughs) Well, every day I'm having a bad day, I'll get the book. And I'll just open up to a page. And my theory is whatever page I open to is what I need for that day. And it has been spot on since I've had the book. And my book is tattered and torn and dog-eared. And you can tell I read it. So That makes me feel good. I love (laughs) that. And I think that's really valuable to have a book with a lot of things in it, a lot of different messages. And and just open it random because your higher self will guide you to the page that you need that day. I do that myself. Well, I want to talk about three things you talk about in this book that I think people do backwards. And you talk okay. about think positive first, send out ships, yes. count your money. Tell me. Yes more about that because I see people going well I'm sitting here thinking positive and I'm not a millionaire and then I have people say well I've sent all this stuff out nothing's happened right well thinking positive is like ground zero you have to start somewhere and you're not going to get into action unless you believe that the actions are going to bear fruit that you're going to have some good responses you can have an idea for a business But unless you think you can make it work, you're not even going to get started. So for me, the think positive and then send out the ships is basically the law of attraction and then the law of action. So the law of attraction is what you think about is what you create. If you think, oh, those idiots are never going to hire me before you go on a job interview, guess what? They're going to see the chip on your shoulder walk in before you do. And yes, they will not hire you because they can tell a negative attitude. You're basically, you're wearing your thinking all the time. It shows up on your face, your attitude, your beliefs, whether you're positive or negative, whether you're in a good mood that day or you're happy that day, people can see it. You're wearing it. So what we have to do is talk ourselves up at the beginning of the day. I am rich and wonderful. Today is a fabulous day. I'm going to make money today. People love to give me money. So we have to change. What I've seen is people have so much negativity in their thinking about money. It's usually about scarcity, lack of limitation. I don't have enough. And from that place, then it's like grasping. And particularly for those of us, you and me, Callie, and others like us who are in service businesses, People want to relate to us 
from, oh, this is somebody who can help me. This is somebody who's interested in me and cares about me. If you're feeling broke and you only care about making a sale, those people are going to feel that you only care about you and not about them. So no matter what is going on in my financial life, I have to put all of that aside when I reach out to talk to a prospective client or uh, a colleague in business and just be at service to say, how can I help you? What is it you need? Because some of the people I talk to don't need what I have. They really do want to save for retirement and need an investment advisor. And I know people like that, so I can refer. And then I'm doing a good job for somebody else. But some people I talk to go, well, I'm just, I, I'm just upside down. I don't know what to do. I'm not getting enough business. Uh, can you help me? Oh, yeah, I can help you with that. So that's the thinking positive part, the law of attraction, doing affirmations, making yourself think positive thoughts by rote instead of money doesn't grow on trees, money is the root of all the evil, which people had in there. Or it's really hard to make money. Uh, the old Donna Summer song, she works hard for the money. All of that stuff just makes you feel like it's unattainable and really hard to get it. And it's really not. So now you can't just do positive affirmations and expect to be sitting on the couch eating bonbons and money is going to (laughs) pour down out of the roof on you. You know, people say, oh, I'm just doing my prosperity thinking, but nothing's happening. I go, well, what are you doing to serve somebody? What is it you're selling? Oh, well, I have a friend who doesn't have to do that. I just say, you know, look, how many affirmations do you think you'd have to do in front of a piano before you could play it? Right. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) At some point you got to take lessons. You got to learn to read music. You got to practice. What does send Mm -hmm. out chips mean? Well, send out chips is my euphemism for the law of action, meaning you have to do something in life to serve other people in order to make money. And I call it send out a, Ships because I, Tony Robbins, in his book, Awaken the Giant Within, he said it's massive, constructive, positive action on a daily basis. And that just sounded really hard to me. So I wanted to take action, but I wanted to, to be fun and pretty. So there was a 1939 movie starring Tyrone Power uh, it's called Lloyds of London. And it was about the beginnings of the insurance company. So in the 1800s, the merchants used to build these clipper ships, these sailing vessels. And they'd spend a long time building the ship and hiring the crew and provisioning it for a long sea voyage. And then they would would send out the ship and it would sail out of London Harbor And then it would go to foreign ports to trade for gold and jewels and silks and spices and then gather all this cargo and come sailing back to London Harbor. Now, there were no mass communication devices then. There wasn't ship-to-shore radio or telegraph or certainly not email or computers. So what they did was they would send out the ship and it's gone. And they don't know whether it's sunk because stuff happens to ships, right? Mutiny on the Bounty, the Titanic, Pirates of the Caribbean. So you can't just send out one ship and wait. You've got to constantly be building ships and sending them out. And then you don't know what ship is going to come in or when. That's not up to you. Sending out ships is up to you. Take the positive action and sure as shooting, there will be ships that come in for you. And when that ship comes sailing in laden with all of this treasure, on that day, the merchant's fortune is made. And that's where the expression, waiting for my ship to come in, comes from. Oh, wow. I never knew that. That's neat. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that's That's really neat. But some people are going down to the dock waiting for their ship to come in, but they didn't send any out. (laughs) You've got to send out ships. This is true. This is very true. I have a lot of clients that do that, that they say, well, I applied to all these jobs and I didn't get any. And I say, how many did you apply to? And they say two. 
and they spent the other right. week, rest of the week eating junk food and playing Xbox, wondering why they didn't get a call from two resumes. I know, right? I actually created a ship's log to keep myself honest. Because what I would do is I go, oh, I know we've got to make some calls to people. You know, all these people who've been on my mailing list or sent me a note and said I'm interested maybe in your next class. And I got to get on the phone and, it, and it enroll them, find out if they're serious and, you know, do more sales and marketing to get more leads and call these people. But it's hard. That's the hardest thing for most people is to call a stranger and have a conversation. So people want the money to be in the email and in the website and in the social media, but it's really not there. The money is in the phone. So I had to keep myself honest because I wanted the money to be in the email. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted people to just send me money through PayPal and I didn't have to do anything. That's Uh, true. But then I realized where I really made the sales was when I had a conversation with somebody like, what's up with you and what do you need and where are you struggling with money? And here's what I would suggest you can do to help. Then I would make sales and people would actually pay me and take my class and then it's wonderful. But what I would do, because that's the hardest part of business is doing sales, just is. Right. So, um... What I would do is I would fool myself. I would call the local uh, supply store and order some things. I would call a friend and have a conversation about personal matters. I would I would be on the phone, but I'd get to the end of the day and go, hmm, I didn't make any money today, but I made a lot of calls. And then I would go, no, you only made like one call that was a business call. So I made the ship's log, which is just a little form where I say, How many times did you dial the phone? Because I give myself credit for even trying because a lot of times you leave voicemail, right? Right. So I would just make a hatch mark. And then how many times are you going to actually talk to people? So maybe I'll dial the phone 20 times and I'll actually talk to five people. And then how many people are going to need another conversation with you or a personal meeting? And then how many people are going to sign up for your class because of all this? And I would put those numbers in. And then throughout the day, I would look at my ship log and go, oh, well, I have to make some more calls because I haven't done what I said I was going to do yet. And it keeps me on purpose. That's awesome. Now, I know this is for business. So you think positive, you send out ships, you make the calls, you do the work, and then your mm-hmm. you know, pirate's booty comes in, you count your money. But what about personal life? Can people use this in their personal life? Absolutely. In your personal life, you still want to be thinking positive. You want to show up looking like a happy camper. You want people to lighten up and brighten when they see you, to get a big smile on their face. This is wonderful because your life is going to be so much better and so is theirs because the crankiness also spreads. And the happiness and joy spread. So you want to be lighting the fire of happiness and joy out there. And then sending out ships for you. It's like if you're a stay-at-home mom, what's sending out a ship? Well, sending out a ship is taking care of your kids, is making sure they're healthy, is figuring out what they need in terms of support for their schoolwork, helping them do homework, helping them get to extracurricular activities. And then budget, very often the woman, the stay-at-home mom will run the, the money, too. I remember my mom used to get dad's paycheck and take it to the bank, and then she would get cash for the discretionary budget items. So she had an envelope, and she would put cash in school activities, clothing, entertainment, dinners, whatever. She had a whole series of things. And then when we came home and said, hey, mom, need money for the class jacket. Can I have the class jacket to go take us to the envelopes? Let's see what's in there. So if there was no money in clothing, maybe we could call it a school activity. And if there wasn't money in there, maybe we don't go to the movies this month and we just take the entertainment money. So we got to see really clearly, this is a great teaching tool for kids, by the way, because I got to see very clearly 
that if there was money in the envelope, I could have what I wanted. If there wasn't any money in the envelope, I couldn't. Now, there wasn't a lot of conversation about how the money got in the envelope and how we could get more money into the envelope. So I had to grow up and figure those things out for myself. But I certainly got the idea of there is a finite amount of money and you can spend it on this or that, but not both. So there were trade-offs. So all of the things of thinking positive and sending out ships absolutely apply to anybody in their personal life. This is so interesting because my husband and I came from very different backgrounds. I grew up in the house uh-huh. where there was never any money for anything. You want to go here? Uh-huh. We don't have the money for that. You want to do this? We don't have the money for that. So I was always told there's never enough. We always live in lack. And my oh. husband was just the opposite. He said, I want a car. Dad and mom went, here's the keys. And then he wrecked the car three hours later, and they said, here's the keys to a new car. So he learned, I just say I want it and I get it. Well, when we got together, I said, life is not like that. You know, unless mommy and daddy are going to finance you, life is not like that. You have to actually do work. And I had to Uh learn how to be more positive because he was always positive. So we were getting married, and we didn't have any money for a wedding. And I pulled your book out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. So I read... Uh, read your book again. And I sat down and I said to him, I'm going to win our wedding. And he looks at me like I was crazy. I said, I'm going to think positive. I'm sending out ships and we're going to win it. So I focused on winning the wedding and I took all these little pieces of paper and I put them all around the house and said, I'm going to win my wedding. And I drug him to all the bridal shows and we entered every contest, every single one. And the first thing that happened was probably about 30 days in, this woman came up to us and said, oh, my God, your husband looks like Brett Michaels. I want to shoot your wedding photography for free. We give one package away. Yep. One package away a year for karma, for good for good karma. And I wanted to shoot your wedding. All you have to pay for is the hotel for us, which is like two hundred dollars. I was floored. I was like, "Okay, awesome. So my husband looks at me and he says, that was luck. That wasn't creation. I said, watch, I'm not done yet. He goes, what else are you going to win? I'm like, we still have the venue and you have the food and you have all the other stuff. And there was a dinner. It was a, um, was a, um, food was kind of different. It was Caribbean food, which we really didn't want, but we entered anyway. And you paid $40 and you went to this tasting. And one of the 10 couples was going to win the venue and the food. So we went Mm -hmm. and you fill out a thing and you put your name in a hat. You only have two chances because there's 20 tickets, 10 couples. And what, you know, we won. And he looked at me. I love it. uh, Yep. And I said, think positive, send out chips, count your booty. And he goes, what are you talking about? And then I pulled your book out and I'm look right here. And he goes, oh my (laughs) God. So I got him to read your book. Now it gets even better. He wanted to go on tour with this big, he's a, a musician. He's a drummer with this big band. Uh-huh. And he goes, they're never going to hire me. And I said, think positive. And he goes, okay. So he put our little signs That's out right. all around the house, you know, that he wanted to go on tour and how much money we wanted to make. And I had him focus on it. And he sent out his email with his press kit and they called. They said, can you fly to LA for an addition? He says, sure. Uh-huh. Goes out there. Now he's sending his ships out. He nails yep. the audition. But not only that, it was the exact amount of money we wrote on our piece of paper on the wall. You know what? There was a time when that would surprise me, but it doesn't now. Because <laughs> I know how that works. When you have that kind of power of intention and you just show up. So that was it. Thinking positive and then showing up and sending out the ship, entering the drawing, buying the ticket, whatever it was, and then reap the rewards. I'm telling you, I've seen it work so many times in so many different ways. I I will tell you, one of the things that I do is uh, I play poker. That's my hobby. And it makes money, too, which is really fun. And some people say, you're a financial professional and you gamble? And I go, well, it's risk-reward ratios. And you have a budget for it. And you see how you're doing. You keep track. It's like anything else. And what in life is not a gamble? There's not a house that can't burn down, a stock that can't lose its value. You don't even know you'll be alive tomorrow. So you might as well do what you want. Take some risks, take some chances, and have some fun. Well, 
I have a big speech coming up for Women's Poker Association. And I'll tell you, I give you a secret clue as to what I'm going to talk about because they expect me to talk about hard dollars, which I'm going to do some of that. But then I'm going to say there's a secret sauce and it's magical. And this is how it works. You think positive about playing poker. You think I am a winner. I win often and I win big. And they have something called bad beat jackpots. Like if you have a really great hand of four of a kind Mm -hmm. and somebody beats you with another four of a kind, it's like two million to one odds. So they have all this money in jackpots. I've played with people who say, I've been playing poker for 20 years and I've never won a jackpot. I just say, well, I won three in one week once. $14,450 in jackpot money with those two million to one shots three times in one week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've won a total of, well, there's a table share. There's the person that got the better four of a kind gets 25%. And the, the person that lost gets the big part, half of the jackpot money, um, which is 50% of it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to have everybody stand up and then sit down. If you haven't at least won a table share and then, Sit down if you haven't won at least the small end. And then sit down if you haven't won the main 50% big end. And I know I'm going to have very few people standing. And then I'm going to say, sit down if you haven't won any of these things at least five times. And then I'm going to give them my statistics. I've won a table share 15 times. I've won the small end of the jackpot three times. And I've won the big end 10 times for over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. People are going to listen up after that about my thinking positive. Oh yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) I can't wait to do this. This is awesome. I'm going to try that. I'm going to learn how to play poker now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, women in poker is just like a growing concern and all of the casinos want to increase the numbers of women playing. And the men want women to play, too, because the more people play, the more opportunities to win, right? That's true. And the more casinos will offer games. And so it's it's just a burgeoning kind of endeavor at this point, business-wise. So I've got a lot of tips for people about how to make it more user-friendly for women. And women, see, have to get better at taking risks. Because if you don't risk some money, you're not going to win some money. If you don't send out the ship, it's you're never going to have a ship come in. So we always need to be have a budget for it. You know, don't go crazy. Take a little risk here and there. You might be surprised. It might be a lot of fun. You'll meet some really great people and you'll learn some skills. I wrote a chapter in my latest book, From Worry to Wealth, it was all for women. And I wrote a chapter called The Amazing Things I Learned About Business from Playing Poker. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fun. You know, things like being patient. You can't make uh, a bad hand into a good hand. You have to wait for a good hand. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can just play your position and pretend you have a good hand and get other people to fold because you're looking so positive. That's the amazing thing about poker. (laughs) It's pretty fun. Very cool. So tell the listeners about this class you have coming up and what that entails and what that could do for them. My class, I designed it back a long time ago. I designed it in 1990 when I owned a bookkeeping service. And I saw all of these people not be able to read the financial statements I gave them. And they just didn't know very much about money. And literacy, financial literacy is not taught in our school system for the most part. Mm-hmm. So I started consulting with my clients and three of them in the same week said, you should be teaching this. And I thought, well, yeah, I know there are a lot of workshop leaders out there. A lot of them are motivational. And, and then there's teachers who teach classes. Well, I want to combine the two. I want it to be motivational. I want it to be spiritual. I want people to make money doing good things, not stealing or lying or cheating or any of that. And so I designed an eight-week course with all of those pieces in it because I believe we're spiritual beings having a material existence 
and we should master both of them, not be totally broke. You know, I saw a lot of the wealthy people had no spirit, and a lot of the spiritual people were really broke because they had, oh, I should just be giving out of my heart and soul and for the good of humanity, and I can't take any money for that. Well, you, if you don't take any money, you're not going to be able to eat, and then you're going to die. So that's not a workable premise. Right. So the class, two hours a week for eight weeks, and I take people through all of the law of attraction, all of the law of action, advertising, selling, if you're in business, or if you want a better job, it's the same thing. Everybody's in sales of something. Even if it's selling your kids on doing their homework, it's a sale. So we talk about that, and then we talk about goals and plans and dreams and what's your action plan to achieve and what ships you need to send out. What's the learning you need to do? And then what's it all about, Alfie? What's your gift? What's your purpose on the planet? What are you here to do? Who are you here to enlighten? What are you here to learn? And then a completion and acknowledgement and then helping everybody. So that eight-week program, the next one will be in February of 2019. I'm in the middle of a class right now. And I give a money-back guarantee you're better off financially at the end of it. So oh, wow. That's really I, I, neat. I know, right? You can take the whole thing. And if you do the work now, I'm, you know, that's the small print. You got to do actually the things I tell you. But I'm available all the time for people to call and have a private conversation with me about how to do that. I keep the classes really small, five to eight people. That's the maximum because I want to give everybody personal attention and find out what are the attitudes and beliefs like. Your husband always thinking the money is going to appear and you thinking, no, money doesn't appear at all. It's hard to get it. Those are beliefs and they got put in and you can change them because this truth is really in the middle, isn't it? You got to do some things to make the money. But if you have the right attitudes and beliefs, the money flow starts being easy. And that's what we all want. So if people are really working the program and the program actually doesn't work for them, I'll give them the money back because I don't want to win if they don't win too. So how can my listeners find you? How can they sign up for your program? How can they call you? What are your, what's your website, your Twitter, your Facebook, that kind of stuff? Sure. My name is spelled Chelly, C-H-E-L-L-I-E. And if you get that piece, C-H-E-L-L-I-E, you have me forever because <laughs> my website is Chelly.com. My email is Chelly at Chelly.com. My phone number, my contact information, I'm in Los Angeles, so call me up, 310-476-1622. That's my home office, and I'm happy to talk to any of your listeners. You're a wonderful person, and I know you have wonderful listeners that I would love to talk to and help in any way I can. Awesome, and we will put all that information up for everybody on the website, so when they see your photo on our unpauseyourlife.com, it'll have everything, how they can reach you, your website, your phone number, everything. And thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for the kind invitation and have a happy and prosperous day. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening. I really hope you enjoyed the show today. Head on over to iTunes and Apple Podcasts and leave a comment or review of what you think or contact us at 1-800-706-0318. If you want to be on our show, feel free to email or call. And if you have a topic, feel free to email or call as well. Thanks for listening to Unpause Your Life. For show notes and more, head on over to unpauseyourlife.com. Big shout out to recoveryinnovators.com for help producing this show. Thank you, guys. Took a walk down the long road Where they said that I shouldn't go On my way found a reason To wake up another day But they needed to show you All the things that you won't do Find faith or religion But nothing to show
Thank you. 